हरे कृष्णा भगवीता चैप्टर वन वर्स थ्री पश्यता पांडुपुत्राण आचार्य महतेम च मोम युधाम द्रुपदपुत्रेण तब शिष्येन धीमता दिस वर्स स्पोकन बाय दुर्योधना द प्रीवियस वर्स निर्द आचार्य संगम्य राजा अचिनम अब्रवीत सो अब्रवीत ही स्पोक दीज वर्ड्स देर इज नो एक्सप्लिसिट दुर्योधन वाच बट देर इज द इंडिकेशन इन द प्रीवियस वर्ड्स सो दुर्योधना वॉट इज ही सेंग इन दिस वर्ड्स लेट्स लुक एट द ट्रांसलेशन वर्ड टू वर्ड फर्स्ट पश्चेता पांडुपुत्राण He's telling Duryodhan, uh, the Dronacharya, Pashyetam, please see, Panduputranam, the sons of Pandu, the Pandavas, Acharya, O oh teacher, you are the te- their teacher as well as my teacher, Mahatim Chamo, magnificently their phalanxes have been organized, Yudham Drupada Putrena, that uh, military formation has been organized by whom? Drupada Putra. Now, the Drupada Putra has a name, Drishtadhyumna. But instead of referring to him by that name, uh, Duryodhana refers to him by his father's name. And there's a reason for that. The old antipathy between Drona and Duryodhana, which we'll discuss about. Tavashishena Dhimata. And it is that enim- that enemy's son. You accepted as your own disciple, and now uh, and you not only accepted him, but you trained him, and just see how expert he has become, and now he is using the expertise learned from you against you. What a travesty it is! That's the implication that Duryodhana wants to convey. You know, you thought of <coughs> being soft-hearted. He thought of being broad-minded, and what is it that got you? Your own disciple has worked against you. Your disciple has shown his true true colors as the son of your enemy by now acting as your enemy. In fact, by remembering, by pointing out to Drupada, he is saying now the the father was always against you, but the son has come, taken training from you. and as now uh, oh, ready to fight against you you know for every text there is a subtext text is what is directly conveyed so uh, directly stated and subtext is what is conveyed either by the choice of words or by the <clears throat> context in which the words are spoken or the tone with which the words are spoken so the subtext is often what conveys emotions so duryodhana wants to seal the commitment of drona to his side and to invoke the fire of anger in drona by which the dampener of affection towards the pandavas that might be there in the heart of drona will be subdued will be countered and drona will fight with the full power and power that he is capable of why does he need such a emergency measure drishtva tu pandavani kam so drishtva so that was what had happened in the previous verse he saw the pandavas forces and he saw that they were formidably aligned so now he is coming to drona now in one sense drona charya can assess the military formations much better than duryodhana because drona has taught Dur- duryodhana and duryodhana although he became expert in various areas especially he became expert in mace fighting he was not uh, in any way known to be a military famous military organizer and definitely not a 
military organizer superior to drona so if duryodhana had seen how formidable was the military formation of the pandavas then even dronacharya has seen that so what is the point for duryodhana to come and speak that ashaitan so is ashaitan just see see etan here of the pandavas panduputranam formidable formation acharya mahatim chamo so the praise the of the pandavas military formation is not coming <coughs> out of any genuine appreciation for the pandavas no adurana has heart felt envy for the pandavas and he wants their destruction and he wants drona to be a part of the destruction so he is referring to the military formation which both have seen just to draw home his point of inciting the anger of drona so yudham drupada putrena now on the pandava side drishtadyumna was appointed as the commander although arjuna was the foremost archer and bhima was the foremost mace fighter on their side and overall during the course of the 18 days these two were the warriors who break the maximum havoc but still they decided that rather than having themselves appoint one of them appointed as the commander they decided to appoint a relatively younger drishtadyumna as the commander because drishtadyumna was empowered in fact he was born to be the death of drona and drona also knows this so that point is also there in duryodhana's mind drona is going to die at the hands of drupada of drupada's son because drupada had done an austerity by which he would get a son who would be able to kill drona and from that fire of the sacrifice that was performed as a part of drupada's austerity drishtadyumna was born and when drishtadyumna appear uh, he is he did not born was not born as a baby from the mother's womb with amnia it flew all around him he was born as an effulgent powerful fear fear inducingly expert warrior who just emerged from the fire and straight got on to a chariot and started exhibiting many marvelous military moves so by this the onlookers understood that this person is truly been is truly extraordinary and this person will become the death of drupada as will become the death of drona as drupada had desired drupada had <coughs> engaged to brahmans yajya and upayajya to do sacrifice so that he would get a son who would become the nemesis of his guru now sometimes dronacharya is equated as the guru of the pandavas now if he is the guru of the pandavas that is not so much in terms of formal initiation but that is in the more in terms of military guidance he is not a spiritual guru so much he is a martial guru and he has instructed both parties kauravas and the pandavas but in this case it is he when drishtadyumna came to learn further about arms he had got some basic knowledge from the Uh, so 
Shridhumna had some powerful skills which he had been born with, but when he had come to Drona for training, Drona had magnanimously agreed to train him further and he had learned a lot from Drona. <coughs> so naturally, he considered that during th this war he would get the opportunity to fulfill his destiny. He was born to, it's time to be able to kill Lopana. So, he uh, took training from, from Drona itself and now he is going to fight against Drona. So, Vidham, Tavaputrena. So, in the name of some principles, you don't have to train your enemy. That was the message that Duryodhana wanted to give, but anyway, now you have trained your enemy and see how the enemy has got you into trouble. Now you have to use your enemy by which you can get me out of trouble also. That is also an implication of Duryodhana when he is saying this. Yudham Drupada Putrena Tava Shishena Dhimata Tava Shishena other, other disciples. So therefore, when we focus on the study of the Bhagavad Gita, every word in it is significant. And here what is described is that it is remarkably easy to let oneself be overcome by illusion and to lose and self and material enjoyment. It's very difficult to attain liberation ultimately. So now, those who are actually strategic in terms of political savvy Duryodhana implies they would never have trained their enemy's son who was just trying to kill themselves. But anyway, you have done that now and see the consequence. So at least now don't repeat the error. Don't <coughs> give up safety in the name of some sentimentality. As Duryodhana considers principles, the principle that a teacher should teach knowledge to whoever comes if that person is qualified. So he doesn't consider that that sort of noble teacher sentiment to be of any value. He says, safety first. If that person is going to kill you, why did you teach him? So anyway, you taught him. Now, don't let any sentiment come in the way. Now you must fight wholeheartedly, fight fiercely. So, that is the implication. Now, this is like pointing out a sore spot for a person and rubbing in the salt over there, rubbing in the wound over there. It is a little uh, too harsh thing to do. But by doing that, now he's, the reason I'm speaking politely, but by doing this essentially, He's ensuring, he's trying to ensure that Drona abandons any thoughts of keeping a soft spot for the Pandavas while fighting on the war and fights wholeheartedly. So, <coughs> therefore, there is Drupada Putrena. So, your Drupada Putrena is Drupada is your enemy, so it's your enemy's son, and now he's fighting against you, and moreover, he is what is implied in the second line is that he's of course destined to kill you. So now is not the time for any sentimentality. Now just focus on safety and success. So fight or Drona. That's what he's saying. So after seeing, when somebody sees that the enemy is very strong and well prepared, then what does one do? One ensures that one's, one's own party is also strong and well prepared. So he's saying, one part of preparation is emotional preparation, where one commits to the war. So 
he's trying to get Drona to commit to the war by saying that, just see, your enemy's son who got training from you, it's like almost like saying that he has defected against you, of course, not exactly like that, because Rishudumna had never committed that he will serve Drona lifelong. So, if he's that, now don't give in to sentimentality, now keep safety in mind and and say fight wholeheartedly and help me to attain victory. This is the subtext. So the subtext is actually, although the word acharya is used in terms of respectfulness, but what is being conveyed is strong instruction and he wants to get Drona to fight wholeheartedly, fight fiercely, fight ferociously. Thank you.